we're not hating on the upset. We're just not going to pretend it's going to happen. You know, what, what, are, what are we six? So it's like, okay, listen, we need the we need the seven seed to the Hawks won last night. So mm-hmm. we need the Hawks to somehow upset Boston. Yeah, that's definitely going to happen. And then game one, MB just has COVID and can't play the rest of it because I don't wish injuries on people. Game one, James Harden and MB both get COVID and can't James play. James Harden elopes with a stripper. Right, and, 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 and James Harden gets – and then MB gets COVID. And you know what? For safe measures, Maxi as well. They all get COVID and can't play. Wow, just giving, stop giving diseases to people. That's not better than injuries. <laughs> well, they're young. I think, and they probably, and they got the shot, so they, they should be fine. Don't say it like that, dude. Fine, fine. They get the flu. Jesus. The point <laughs> is allergies. I don't care. The point is they get sick. <laughs> and can't, and yeah, can't and beat us out tonight. Why allergies? What the fuck are you just saying? <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It was a beautiful day to discuss other people's excellence. I'm the unforgettable one himself, Mr. Brett Carroll. Charles is always daydreaming, and we're two guys that like BS in that work. It's been a long time. Yeah, and, uh, we're, back. Minute. we're back. We're better than ever. And we talking playoffs, baby. Playoffs. Playoffs, Kobe. One of my favorite. Oh, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. One of my favorite commercials of all time, the MVP puppets commercials that Nike did. With Keenan Thompson as LeBron, David Allen Greer as Kobe Bryant. If you haven't watched it, please YouTube it. Like, and, and that's where the Black Mamba comes from because in that commercial he says, "And I'm the Black Mamba," and 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 and, and the puppet's like, "No one calls you that, Kobe." <laughs> like, like, like that's where everybody. that comes from. And now everybody calls him it. Yeah, it's just he's the black. Like that's an actual thing that started because in that commercial he put in that video. Like, why are we doing? It? Why are you making me watch this video again? <laughs> Those were so good. Twenty dollar Chinese food, <laughs> playoffs, baby, playoffs. It's amazing. It's it's that is that is that's that's. If you that's don't fun. know what we're talking about, it's two puppets, like and, and when he's screaming playoffs, Cavaliers, LeBron James just popping champagne, and, and and Kobe's just like sitting there on the couch, like yeah, wow, it's great, great play. <laughs> So it's just so good. It's so good. It's, it, it's, oh, but yeah, that's that shows our age because that commercial is intended for like veteran Kobe and like rookie LeBron James hanging out together, and that's just it is. That was when he, Kobe. That was in Cleveland the first time before he left for Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, that, 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 that that's art. You see, that's art. That's art. That's cinema. But anyway, we are talking playoffs. The NBA regular season is officially over. Last night we had the seven eight games. Tonight are the nine ten games. But we don't really care about that. We're talking about the big playoff picture. There's a lot we want to get into. Um, before we talk about the playoffs, there's, there's been some things that have happened over the last couple of days of the regular season that were pretty big that we want to kind of just discuss before we get into the fun of the playoffs. Um, one of them includes the Mavericks. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, there's been a huge controversy because they did what you, what everybody's doing, but they, they said it out loud. Oops. They you know, cover your ears. I'm going to use, I'm a curse. They. Oh my God. Oh, the shame, the betrayal, the travesty. Was taken outside. They chose to lose games at the end of the season to improve their draft status. And now everybody is in a pickle, losing their minds. And I get it because it looks bad because they had a chance to make the play-in tournament. The whole point of the play-in tournament was to st- was to try to stop tanking, and they basically said, "Yo, we're not going to participate. We're going to lose." However, however, this is re- to me a non-story, and people and the reason why I have a problem with it because the people on ESPN and Foxborough, one the people that are supposed to be like knowledgeable about this stuff. They're making it sound like it was as simple as winning you're in, losing you're out. And they said, eh, we're going to lose. That's not what happened. That is not what happened. That is not what happened. I agree there. That, that, like, that, like, so let's, so let me just make sure people are clear on what actually happened. We're recording this on Wednesday, right? Literally a week ago today, they played the Sacramento Kings and they won that game. You know why? Because they were trying to win. They had their starters in. They played a great game. They beat the Sacramento Kings. That's important because in that win, 
even though it kept their playoff hopes alive for themselves, that loss by Sacramento helped Memphis lock up the two seed. That's very important. So Thursday, by the time you guys are going to watch this, a week ago from that day, they were trying to still go for it. That plan was to go to try to make the plan. Except Thursday night, Oklahoma City won their game. Why is that important? Because the Mavericks needed Oklahoma City to lose at least one more game, and they had to win, as in the Mavericks, had to win both of their last games in order to make the plan. When OKC won, and now was always contingent on them losing their last game of the season. Oh, who did they play their last game of the season? That's right. The Memphis Grizzlies, who we knew were not going to play anybody. And so the Mavericks had a decision to make. Do we try to win these next two games and hope for a miracle to happen that OKC loses on Sunday? Which, by the way, to be fair, we've seen crazier things. It could have happened. It could have happened. We've seen crazier things. That's literally happened before where one team didn't play anybody, another team was trying to win, and somehow they still lost. That's happened before. It's It doesn't happen often, but it's happened. So should they have done that? The other issue is this. They were playing a Bulls team who was also not playing any of their starters. You know why? They also have the 10th – they're tied for the 10th worst record in basketball. And the way the playing works, because I think some people still don't understand kind of how the playing works, it's not a regular season game. It's not a playoff game. It's literally two exhibition games. It's its own thing statistically. Right. It's its own thing statistically. So if you are the Bulls, you're sitting there with the 10th worst uh, record, right? Let's say they lose tonight. Their season's done. They would have had the 10th worst record in the league. Who are they tied with? Oh, that's right. The Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks and the Bulls were tied for the 10th worst record in the league. Now, why is that important? The Mavericks, if they finish outside the top 10, if they get outside the top 10 pick, that pick goes to the New York Knicks and the Porzingis trade. So the Mavericks are sitting there saying to themselves, okay, we cannot even control our destiny in terms of going to the plane. We can't even control our destiny in terms of the the draft pick if we win. The only thing we can do is just lose these last two games and secure that 10th worst record. Because if you know anything about the lottery, chances are they were going to keep that 10th pick. It is very, very rare. Matter of fact, I think I looked it up from the little bit of research I can find. There's only been one time where a team outside of the top 10 got the number one pick in the draft. There's also been very, I think it's even less times, and I don't think I don't think I've ever seen a team go into the top three besides that. So basically, if you have the tenth worst record, you're going to have the tenth pick. So this this controversy is like, oh my god, they're thumbing their nose at the playing tournament. I can't believe they did that. It's just not true. Had OKC lost, they would have went for it. But but by OKC winning on Thursday, that changed everything because they realized our chances of making the playing tournament are slim to none. So the one thing we can control is this 10th pick, which, by the way, they need because this roster is not good outside of Luka and Kai. And that 10th pick is the best asset they're going to have going forward to help build this roster, whether it's drafting a guy and hoping he can contribute all the way or most likely trading that pick for some more veterans to come in and help the team so i just want to get that out the way because i think it's a nonsense that and i get it espn benefits from the playing tournament well you were specifically on that day mad at michael wilbon i remember that because he knows better and the takes he had about Kyrie and da, 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 da. you know what i mean it was the same old tire talking points but so. it wasn't even just him though like so yesterday on get up mike they had a whole segment on mike and greeny was going off and everybody's going off and they and they kept and again they were also saying, "Oh my God, how could they do this? You win and you're in, and you choose not to win." And it's like that's not that's not the case. And no, that's why- especially with Dallas because Dallas is in a really. Uh, there's reports now that saying that you know they feel like they can re-sign Kyrie, which is something like you know the rest of us in the basketball universe really doesn't feel like it's going to happen. But you know, stranger things have happened. They might throw 
the bag at him and it might be one of those contracts he'd be stupid not to sign. So, because they have to, they, they, that, they, that was the move they made. The, the Dallas Mavericks have done a good job at not paying the guys they should have paid that are more or less homegrown guys, Jalen Brunson, and making all these deals, blowing up whatever uh, stability Lucas should have by, uh, by this point in his career, because it's crazy that we're going to be talking about an MVP conversation. And at this point in his career with his talent level, with the comparisons to LeBron that are still being made. Oh, and, there, and he's not year, in the MVP conversation. Right. And every year he's the odds on favor to win it at the beginning of the season, every single year, like for the last three years, at the beginning of the season, the odds on favor has been Luca. Like, so they've been trying to predict this Luca this Luca, you know, takeover for years now, and it just hasn't happened. So, and don't this, put me in a Brett in a box because we got the red, black, and green mic. Like we've been on this dude, this this Euro MVP for years now, saying this is the dude, this is the dude. And Brett pointed out, Jason Kidd, what the hell? What what is his like equity in the league as a head coach? That. How much, how much is he going to suck and keep getting uh, chances? Because you can make the argument he improved Giannis and made him better at playing point, but that does not mean he's a good head coach. That means he should be an assistant and working with point guards. Um, and that's to his credit. He's one of my favorite players of all time because he's one of the greatest point guards of all time. But the Mavs aren't – like when we did – last time I was on here, Brett's been holding it down with the solo pods – we were talking about the trades. We were talking about the Nets. We were talking about the state of the Nets. And one of the things uh, Brett uh, might have brought up was just the generational talent that uh, Kyrie is. And we kind of went back and forth about that. And to have hypothetically, or arguably, not even hypothetically, arguably, two of two generational talents in the backcourt and to just miss the playoffs. I know they haven't had that much time, yada, 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 team chemistry in the playoffs really does matter, obviously. But the offensive talent is all time on paper, and they should make the playoffs. So that's the optics of the situation. But the reality is there's no real way to improve the team outside of re-signing Kyrie and hoping for the best in the draft. And obviously, you know, tweaks here and there with uh, the mid, the low mid-level exception guys that you, you could get in, in free agency veterans. Sure. But is that okay? That's a playoff team. That's the bottom of the barrel playoff team. I just described to you all time backcourt scraps and a rookie that hopefully could turn into a star. Like I'll give them that. Let's say the rookie works honestly, out. Right. Yeah. And honestly, I feel like I said, I think more likely they would have to just turn around and trade that pick, but, but you have to have the pick in order to trade it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, there could be that's a another thing. They, they trade back. Have, they trade back at more assets. You know what I mean? Like, like they they don't they don't have even picks to trade because besides this pick, the only other pick they have is their 2027 first rounder. That's literally the only pick they have at their disposal to trade. So they desperately need that number ten pick. Um, and here's the thing. You know, I I didn't think the Mavericks team would work because you know how I am about defense, and that team was going to play zero defense. And as we saw, they played zero defense. Um, if you're the Mavs, you're a little bit, you know, not even though this was a bad season, this might have been a blessing in disguise because now because what you probably figured at the beginning of the year you're going to lose your pick. Now you might have it. So this might have been a blessing in disguise in terms of if you re-sign Kai, re-sign Christian Wood, use that pick and maybe that 2027 first rounder to get somebody else in there, you know, good, probably not a superstar, but at least like a, some, some, you know, wing defenders or whatever, 3 and D wings, you might be good. Because again, even in their collapse, a lot of those were close games, right? And I think that's the baffling part. It's like, wow, if you told me I had Luka and Kai, two of the best closers in the league, and I had 14 like close games, quote unquote, and we lose about half of them, that's kind of mind-boggling. And that could have just been the chemistry thing that you're talking about, of them trying to figure out what to do in those situations. Because that is real, man. One of my biggest, like, I, I didn't think it was going to work between them. And, and by all accounts right now, it's not working. Um, and by all accounts, I mean, the report's coming out of Dallas. Y'all know I ain't following Dallas Mavericks games that much, even though there is an ironic legacy of our great point guards heading to, to the Mavs. Uh, you know, kid... Uh, Harris now Kai it's just that's just weird and then later players like Spence and Vince Carter made their way there so it's just a weird relationship my team has with the Mavs but uh, real quick just because it happened literally last night as of this recording 
to, to your point about you don't know what's going to happen when you want it more. And, and, and some people just see the optics of the Mavs and they see two guys kind of playing by themselves the same style uh, of the hero ball style that we, we, we come and know and love here in the NBA. But the Heat aren't in the playoffs. The Heat lost. Like, Well, they're not done yet. They got to lose. Again. Oh, yeah, they got to lose tonight. But, like, they should have won. Like by all, like that's a Spo team. That, that's that, that's that, that's that, that's you know Jimmy Butler, yeah, uh, Bam, no, no, I mean, Tyler I'm the Hero, and the Hawks. Yeah, you're right. So no, so, so that's where the controversy comes of like, well, you never know if you get in, you get in. But that's my, but that's why I preface it by saying they weren't going to get in, and that's I, and I think that's where people are mishandling the situation because I think they. I think they did believe like, hey, we lost a lot of close games. We do have Luka. We do have Kyrie. To be fair, a playoff scenario actually benefits our team better. The game slows down a little bit better. It's more of a half-court style that fits what we want to do more. Um, So I think, that again, I I totally believe they would have went for it had they really thought they had a chance, hence why they won last week against Sacramento. When the circumstances changed and they said, wait a minute, why win these games? when there's like a 90 plus percent chance we don't make it anyway. And then we just screwed ourselves out of that 10th pick. That was, that was the mindset. If OKC won, or if it was a situation where, um, you know, it win and we're in anyway, they would have went for it. They would have went for it. Hence they went for it the day before. So that's what Michael Woodbond was talking about. If you were going to do this, why don't you do it two weeks ago? Cause two weeks ago, they still had a chance, idiot. Like, 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 what are we talking about? So that's why I'm just getting frustrated because people are acting as if they, because even Green, Greeny, because he had um Damian Willie, Woody and Marcus Spears on there, he kept comparing it to football. Like, oh, they added that seventh seed in the playoffs. If you had a chance to win and get in and you just didn't do it, would you do that the last game of the season? Da, 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 da. I'm like, but that's not fair because that's not a good it's comparison. It's really unfair to the Maverick situation. Like, that's yeah, really that's- what it is. That's all it is is that we're trying to be objective here because there's an argument and it's not taking a whole season. Like the argument was, was about teams giving up before the trade deadline. The idea that the 10th seed is like, yo, we're better off if we get the draft pick because we're dead in the playoffs anyway. Like that's a real decision that had to be made. And again, they can still, my, but, but they you know what's crazy? Win. But it, but again, my thing is that's not even that's not that's not even what they were saying because that's because people are saying, oh, that's not fair. You should have went for it because you never would have you you never know you never know. But that wasn't even the decision. The decision was made already. The decision was we're not going to make the plan anyway. So mm-hmm. why even take ourselves out of this draft pick? Because that because what you're saying is what people have a problem with. It's like, yo, man, you can't do that give yourself a chance to win but it's like but that's what that's what i'm saying that's not even what happened they looked at it and said yo we're not going to make the plan if okc somehow loses on sunday anyway well damn so be it but even then that's probably because they would have not played their starters because we already lost but at the end of the day it doesn't make sense for us to win those last two games basically could mind you uh, again, because same thing with the Mavericks, right? Let's say they do that and they get a miracle and they do make the play-in and they lose in the play-in. Now they jumped OKC and the Bulls. So now they would have been 12 and they really would have been screwed. But, and that's if they had a miracle happen and they make the play-in. So that's what I'm saying. It didn't make any sense whatsoever to win those, to win those two games, especially when one of the teams you were fighting where you were in direct competition for that 10th pick for. And again, if they had their first round pick, this would have been a non-issue. They would have went for it anyway and hoped for that miracle. The problem is they were right there at 10. They were right there at 10. If they're at 11, that's going to New York. Like that, I, like that's what I'm saying. Like people need to like use some common sense. It's not like they said, oh, we want a better draft pick or, oh, we're trying to get into Victor Wemmyeva sweepstakes. That's not what happened here. <laughs> that is not a happen at all. They're like, well, listen, we're right there at 10. We can at least control our destiny at 10 instead of winning two meaningless games and going to potentially 11 or 12. That's stupid. They made the right decision. So it is what it is. The other controversy, um, late in, late in, you know, last I like how year, our playoff pod is starting with two really not playoff teams, but okay. Well, this one is the, t- the Timberwolves. They're in the play-in, even though they lost last night. Yeah, um, but, but that's part. That's part of their controversy too. The the Timberwolves 
made the plan. They're the seventh seed. Timberwolves are just a bad franchise, man. Like, sorry to cut you off because, like, I want you to tell me all about the fight and, and, and some of the stuff I may have missed when it comes to the BS reporting. Not the reporting is BS, but the BS that was reported coming out of the locker room. Uh, I, they're just so bad. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about this from the standpoint I just saw yesterday a short of, of – KG talking about his time with Starberry on the T-Wolves. And, bro, that's going to be 30 years ago. Like, the T-Wolves have Cat. They have, they have Edwards. They, they have, like, they have these talents. They, have, they had Wiggins. Like, they had all these dudes that, that you had the players. You had the talent. And then, and then you trade four picks to get a Rudy Gobert. Like, it's insane. Like, four uh, picks got Kevin Durant. Durant. Four picks got Kevin Durant. Technically five picks. It's disgusting, them. dude. Like, like, no disrespect to Rudy Gobert. He really is a, a good defensive center, but he's not worth four fucking NBA picks. Five, sorry, five NBA picks. Like, and he's at, and he's at the end of his prime. Like, he's in his 30s already. It's not like he was a 22-year-old that you did this for. You, you did it for a guy that, like, you know you're only going to get maybe a couple more seasons of good root goal bear for yeah minnesota um, should be sold for, for the way they've they've ruined they have wasted well, they, did get sold. they did get sold that's the problem. they, <laughs> they just got carl anthony now a, a, a rod just a rod and his people just bought the team and they're already doing dumb stuff so it's like ridiculous so if you guys don't know kyle anderson shout out jersey kids shout out slow-mo bergen county um got into an altercation with rudy gobert and you know as men do, they argued in, in the huddle and, you know, words were said that probably shouldn't have been said. And Rudy Gobert kind of punched him in the shoulder slash chest area and it, they had to get separated. And the T-Wolves decided to send a statement, you know, because culture, don't get me started on that word, but culture. Culture is important, Brett. Yeah, so important. It's more important than playoff wins. They decided to suspend Rudy Gobert for the playing game like last night, which they lost against the Lakers. And it was a close game. And it's one of those things like, hmm, maybe if you had Rudy Gobert, you might have won. You traded five picks for that dude that is best known to casual fans. Think about this, guys. This is best known to casual fans, at least English-speaking casual fans, as the asshole that had COVID that touched all the mics three years ago. Mm-hmm. That's what he's best known for. Yeah, at this point, like yeah. I don't know what he's best known for in French-speaking countries. Dude could be funny as hell. I don't know. He but blocks like, shots and blocks NBA seasons. That's exactly what he does. But 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 this is they, but this is and and again, it's it's and, and, and you know, shout out to Mad Dog Russo. He had me crying today on first day. But he made a good point. It's like, bro, either suspend it if you really want to send a message. If culture is what you're really trying to preach here, either suspend him for the two games. Right, so either both playing games or playing game slash game one of the uh, playoffs, or don't suspend them at all. Mm-hmm. You you knowing that you're the seven C, so even if you lose, you still have a home game uh, against the nine ten winner. Um, that like that's not really punishment. That's just you you know hedging your bet basically. Like hey, if we win without him, great. We have him for the playoffs. If we lose, we still have him for uh you know a potential game against the 9-10 winner that's not really punishment and you're hurting your team at that point because I would have rather won and, and ensured my ability to make the playoffs than to lose and now we got to now all hinges on this one game you and know who, I mean? who, who do you got playing that they play well the 9-10 the winner is tonight so who, who hey, but who's your prediction and who do you think is like either one of those teams could be it's okc versus new orleans oh yes okc yeah. versus new orleans tonight no 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 uh zion surprise i, I still kind of think new orleans because brandon ingram's been playing really well um and honestly it's minnesota bro like i think anybody you're explosive slashing chew guard that can shoot mixed with a generational center and cat he's been good since college he's been good every year in the pros he's one of the only centers that can do what he does and you're just wasting him like real well, talk well, so, he, and to be fair and to be fair he he had the injury this year so they they were playing better and then he got hurt and then they slid but they're one of his career like like this isn't oh, yeah yeah, like, yeah yeah true 
True. But I mean, I, it's it's one of those weird things like they can beat anybody, but they can lose to anybody. And you just never know with them. So it's like, I don't know, like Rudy Gobert playing tonight or tomorrow night should help them, you know, depending on who they're playing. But at the same time, like they still could lose to either one of those teams. Like, I mean, and whoever wins that game, I don't think they're beating the Nuggets in the first round anyway, which is why we're recording today and not waiting for all the playing games to finish because yeah. no no offense to history, the NBA tells me that the seven, eight seeds aren't going to do much in the playoffs regardless. And if they do, we'll record then about what just happened. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's more content for us. If they do, then it's like, oh, uh, by the way, can you record today? Because uh, Like we're so- Nets fans. Like we, we want a, a paradigm shifting upset to happen on our end. Like, like right. what are you talking about? Like we're not hating on the upset. We're just not going to pretend – it's gonna happen. What are, what, are, what are we six? So it's like, okay. Listen, we need the we need the seven seed to the Hawks won last night. So mm-hmm. we need the Hawks to somehow upset Boston. Yeah, that's definitely and, gonna and, happen. And then game one, MB just has COVID and can't play the rest of it because I don't wish injuries on people. And game one, James Harden and MB both get COVID and can't James play. Harden elopes with a stripper, right? And and, and, and James Harden gets and then MB gets COVID. And you know what? For safe measures, Maxi as well. They all get COVID and can't play. Wow, you're just giving, stop giving diseases to people. That's not better than injuries. <laughs> well, they're young. I think, and they probably, and they got the shot, so they, they should be fine. Don't say it like that, dude. Fine, fine. They get the flu. Jesus. The point <laughs> is allergies. I don't care. The point is they get sick. <laughs> and can't, and yeah, can't and beat us out tonight. Why allergies? What the fuck are you just saying? Hey, listen, if they were like me this morning, it was like, yo, bro, I can't play. I can't even see. So, like, like I'm crazy out here right now. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, so, yes, as, as you know, as fans of teams that are usually on those lower seeds, trust me, an upset would be fantastic. But the point of the matter is we don't think either any of those teams. The Lakers are one thing. We'll talk about the Lakers later um because they are now the seventh seed and that would be an interesting matchup between them and the grizzlies um so we'll talk about them later but besides that i don't think we have any faith in any of these teams doing anything ridiculous in the playoffs not really like like the lakers the lakers like i don't know like because we're gonna talk about we want to talk about it anyway so the lakers grizzlies is one of the first round matchups i'm most excited about I'll, 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 i'll give both conferences lakers grizzlies for obvious reasons and and then Cavs Knicks, man. Besides my own team, but if I'm being honest and objective, Cavs Knicks has the potential to go seven games and create a new Eastern Conference rivalry that's this generation that's built out of these rosters. And it could be really fun. I feel like the Sixers are, are as a Nets fan, have been our most fun, biggest rivals in the last 10, 10 years in Brooklyn. I feel like th- there are guys, which is a big reason why, why the fuck did, uh, like, do, do, do we act like we're supposed to have some type of loyalty to Ben Simmons? We were chanting fuck Ben Simmons last time Spencer was starting for the Nets in the playoffs five years ago, five straight years of Nets being in the playoffs, by the way, um, which is something in Nets history, regardless of how uh, Brett currently feels about the administration of the Nets. Like, I'm, well, actually, honestly, no, because that, that's been the, that's been the Nets thing. It's like, they're that team that always does that. Like five years, they're a playoff team, and five years they stink. Five years playoff team, five years they stink. So it's they've always been like one of those teams that kind of go up and down in that way. And credit to them, you know, at least since we've been alive and really rooting for the Nets, they've never had these ridiculously long droughts of being bad. They've usually figured out a way to get back into it. Now, normally it's but by trading for superstars and like you know, fast forwarding the process a little bit, but still. Again, the Kings are making the playoffs for the first time since 2003. So I'm not going to complain about yeah, that. Yeah, for real. And shout out to them, too. They're playing, they're playing the playing Timberwolves. The Warriors, if, they, if they make the playoffs this year, they'll, they'll, that'll only be the third time since 2003. So, again, as a Nets fan, like we're, we're still a little spoiled in that regard where it's never been, at least, again, since we've been alive, this ridiculously long drought of being horrible. We've been a playoff team, and when, we, and we, when we've been bad, we've been really bad. And, and I guess the problem is when we've been good, we haven't been good enough. We so, have never got back to the conference finals, which as, as ridiculous as it sounds, because um, like Rondo was on ESPN and he said one of the truest things, like objectively, and I you don't know, I ain't no fan of Boston, but they're not hanging Eastern Conference championship uh, banners up in Boston. 
Right. Like they're not proud to make the final. We, we would be we would be excited about that, right? Yeah. yeah. And if the Nets made the finals one of the last five years, it would be something to hold the hats onto. That's just a difference in the franchises. And, and trust me, Celtics fans throwing in our face enough, but it is what it is. At the end of the day, that they're one of the most championship franchises in all sports. Um, but I'm not mostly excited for their series. Cavs, Knicks, like for, for what I said, and then in the West, you got. LeBron having a chance to to make one of those movie moment runs against the Grizzlies, who he's had some of the most viral moments of his Lakers tenure with, like it, it, one of the most constantly shared oh, moments. Please, please give me, un- give me Unc Shea Shea versus Dylan Brooks again, because you know he's gonna be at those games, at least at the Lakers games. Give me part two of that. Um, I agree with you, by the way. Dylan of- Brooks, the biggest villain since Pat Bev, apparently. Right. Uh, I agree with you in terms of, see, I was, I was going to cop out because the first round series is always a four or five matchup because those are the ones that are probably going to go seven. And this year we have two good four, four or five matchups. We got Suns Clippers, which should be fun. And I agree, but my biggest thing was you, Knicks Cavs, just, just off the controversy alone of the whole uh, Donovan Mitchell thing, like the drama of that. I think those are two teams that are evenly matched. So that should go seven games. Like you said, um also you know, showing how crazy it would be if they gave up RJ in those picks and you put Donovan Mitchell on this Knicks team and how they played this year because we all give Donovan Mitchell in spite of the benefit of the doubt that the chemistry wouldn't be there so let's be positive because we're, me and you of all people are being super positive about the Knicks right now so fuck it roll with it right like if they had spite this Knicks team took, like we're all looking like yo well you know what's crazy <laughs> I actually commended them for not doing it because to me, the amount of assets that they would have had to give up to me, they probably would have been in the exact same place. You know what I mean? No, they would be in the same seating right now, but I'm saying that core that Brunson um, Mitchell. True. And to be fair, I didn't, I didn't think Jalen Brunson would play this well. If you were to tell me that Jalen Brunson would, would play this well. Brunson now, also, a healthy Randall, give Randall's props to me. You've been harsh as fuck on Randall, but I'll give him his props. The dude, if he's the third best player of a core that Spider, Brunson, and Mitchell, and then and you still got quickly and shit, like. Well, they probably would have had to give up quickly. Maybe. Been, who knows, it, bro? It like, would have been RJ. It obviously, would have been RJ, which now, like, you know, he hasn't really played that well. So, like, a lot of Knicks fans probably will, will probably do things like, damn, we should. It's a by Felicia now. We had a time machine. They're like, no, you idiots, trade him. Like, right. so it's like, you know what I mean? It's, you know, whatever. But that I'm excited about that. That's, that's going to be a good matchup. But I also agree with you, Lakers, Lakers, Memphis. That should be fun. I will say this, too, though, because I'm surprised. Uh, Miami lost night last night. I really am, but Miami Milwaukee might be interesting because Jimmy Butler in the playoffs is usually really good. Um, what's the, what's the other Eastern matchup? Shit, I just went blank. Hold nine on. ten tonight is Raptors Bulls, and, yeah. and whoever wins will play Miami. But that's the, tough, man, because those are two teams that if like if if Miami plays like how Miami played last night. Yeah, they ain't winning shit. They went <laughs> like, shit. But I mean, the, they didn't play like, like they but, cared. Yeah, but like you said, you can't count out Spo. You can't count Jimmy. You know, he have just been weird this year. They just, they don't play with that same grit and tenacity that they usually do. And I don't know. I haven't watched any Heat games, so I don't know if it's injuries. I don't know if it's just JJ, you know. your boy JJ on first take. And to his credit, he said, "Hey man, you guys know I'm the last one." To be like, oh, they've just played harder. He said that was the first time in his life he actually watched the game. He's like, no, they're winning just because they want it more. He said that's what it, that, that old sports fra- uh, uh, phrase. He's like, I hate that phrase. And it's like, it's the first time in my life I actually thought it like organically. Like, wow, they're just playing like they want it more. And that's insane because I don't think you can blame Spo. And this is what JJ said because, and, and, and he's got a lot more insight than a lot of other dudes they have on these fucking stupid arguing shows. He said the body language has just been off the heat this year. They're not, they don't play like they like each other. He's like, uh, he kept it real. He's like, that's it. They don't seem to like each other and they play like, and like from, from they, what they we're know hearing, what they are. And from what we're hearing, some of it, at least, I don't know if all of it, but at least some of it has been because Kyle Lowry hasn't played well and they just thought they were getting a better version of Kyle Lowry than they've gotten. And part of me is like, really? Like, he's like, he's old, guys. Like, we forget how long he's been in the league. And But the ironic part is he had 33 points last night. So, like, that was literally his best game as a Heat player since he's been there. So, 
if they're not even inspired by him playing well, then I don't know what's going on with that team. I, I really don't. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things like Miami's weird because I think we still kind of believe in them to the point like if they can get to the playoffs, they can flip a switch. And that's not a team you would want to play as a seven or eight seed. I think so the Bucks could... beat them in five. And I'm being generous just because I like Spo. Like, like they would sweep them. Sweep them. The Bucks. Yeah, I, I, I would have liked them better against my uh, Boston. I think they would have matched up better against Boston um, than Milwaukee. But... I think, I don't think, after, what I, after how they played against the Hawks, they're getting fed. That's a feeding. That's one of those things that you're going to look back on and be like, the Miami he got swept. You know what I mean? That's what it's gonna. That, that's what it would be. This no, year. I mean, they, and they got they got blown up by the Nets. I think right a couple of weeks ago. Like they they they've just haven't played. We, well we that was one of the wins after the trade deadline. We beat the Heat. When everyone was was saying, "Oh, that's an L." You know, we're about to start sliding down. That was one of the wins. That was one of the good wins. That, I'm yeah, sure. that was one of that. Yeah, that was like a, no, that was like two weeks ago. That was like one of the wins, which was crazy because that game was important because Miami was right behind us for six. And the fact that we blew them out in Miami to basically help clinch the sixth seed, like even yeah, we beat them Haslam, twice. We've beat them twice since the trade deadline. Yeah, like even Udonis has was like, yo, I don't know what's going on with this team, man. Like that, that's who's that's, in great shape. Dude yeah, is a freak. Yeah, by, by the way, congrats to him. He's retiring finally. Um, I mean, you know, bro, that, he's he's one of those players that like. I, I, I like I, I was a big Wade fan. I was a big LeBron fan. So I love the big three Heat, despite them being in the conference with the Nets. Like I have a LeBron jersey. I have a sick Wade jersey where it's the away red jersey in the front and the white home jersey in the back. Um, all that to say, Udonis Haslam is just one of the best players I ever got to watch in a completely different way than we usually say that. That dude has been a consistent, you can count on him type of player for. 20 seasons like something some damn some, near close to it so i'm just happy for him in the sense that like he gets to go out on his own terms like yeah, no one no one was expecting him to uh, be lebron and try to get a ring to go out on but the the, the be a useful nba player now through the, how he's been in his whole career and how he's played and, and he's just the fact that he's still on the roster not only still on the roster he's a value member of the roster and in the locker room so shout out to him. Yeah, um, I, think he, I think he was also in the 03 draft. So yeah, same same year as LeBron and Wade Bates, obviously. And um, and the Lake, speaking of LeBron though, how far can the Lakers go? I feel like all of us believe in magic and, and want to be kids and say they can win it all. And then the, and another part of us says they lose in this round versus the Grizzlies. So like I'm 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 in I'm in both camps right now. I'm gonna have fun and I'm saying there's a chance. There is a chance they go on. If they can get past the Grizzlies, their path is kind of easy because you figure if they beat the Grizzlies, that means they're either playing the Kings or the Warriors, right? Yeah, the Warriors are the sixth seed. So if they beat the if they beat the Grizzlies, by the way, the Grizzlies are not healthy, one. And the Grizzlies scare me because as much as I love them, and you know, I am a huge Grizzlies fan. Like that's kind of like, that's kind of, I've kind of adopted them as my second team for a while now. In in basketball, if you had some random, yeah, they're the randomest team that you've always brought up. And it's like, if if the Nets didn't say local, you'd be like, Grindhouse was the greatest era of basketball. No, no, seriously, ever since the grit and grind days, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I like them. I like, I just like the colors. I like the colors. Terrible Nets coach. Good, good. Grizzlies coach, terrible great, Nets. Great coach. Grizzlies coach. I don't know. I still don't understand why they fired him. Terrible Nets coach, though. What am like, I? He's my. He's my. Consider what I'm saying here. He's my least favorite Nets coach ever. Wow, that's saying a lot, actually. Um, that's saying a whole <laughs> lot. But yeah, like, the thing that scares me about the Grizzlies are, I just think they're just so full of themselves. Like they've won something and they haven't done it yet, and so. That scares me. You play a team like LeBron and AD and like that veteran team that's like, like, bro, little boys, this is not a joke, bro. This is our legacy. This is my, like, think about if you're LeBron, like, yo, this is my legacy on the line. Yeah, like, bro, the viral moment I was talking about against the Grizzlies, he's like, nah, y'all fucking around. Like, and yeah. it was a regular season game. They're all laughing like, ha, 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 ha. He hasn't forgot that. Like that's a vi- think about this. We all know LeBron for how great he is, for how legendary in our country's sports history this man is already. I don't give a fuck what the LeBron haters say. The dude's already a, li- a living legend in our country. 
Mm-hmm. That dude has been living with that viral moment of you fucking kids on the Grizzlies talking shit to him, making him look stupid because the, the Lakers been under 500. And now he's here in the playoffs. You know what he did to the North all these years when they were talking shit like next year's our year? And he was still like, I'm sorry, they call me king around here. And all he has to do for his oh, yeah. legacy is whoop. The Grizzlies, he could lose after that. But if he if he just puts on a classic LeBron 30 points and damn near triple-double stats, like an eight here and a seven there, and he just whoops. No, I'll give him double-double, 30 and 10, because 10 of them are going to Anthony Davis for his points. Like, that's all he has to do. And his legacy is, again, like people are like, the king still got it. That's all he actually has to do in this playoff run. He's, he's King James, but he's also King Petty. Like yeah. He, he oh, he, he, him, he's the petty king. Yeah, he's he prides himself on that. And then so, I took that personal when he compared right, exactly. me to Jordan. I don't get why they compared me to Jordan. Right. Exactly. You're both so, petty as shit. Right. So at the end of the day, it's as a Grizzlies fan, I put that in quotes. As a Grizzlies fan, as a John ja Morant fan, because I really do like John ja Morant, John ja Wick, whatever y'all want to call him. Um that they do scare me because they're that young team that just feel like they just be smelling their own perfume yeah, a little bit. Yeah, no, I oh, hear look, it. I, I haven't it, done anything yet, man. And the playoffs are different. But I keep telling people when I say the regular season doesn't matter, it's not that I'm saying it literally does not matter. What I'm saying is when you have a season that long, right? What you do in the regular season is irrelevant to your point, right? Because you threw it back in my face. Hey, the next winning 12 straight. Do we give a damn about that anymore? No. When, when did that happen? In December? Does that mean anything to what we're doing right now? No, it does not. Right? So, and I say it all the time, it's so easy to rack up regular season wins because if you have talent, you're going to rack up wins. Teams take nights off. Teams low manage. The backs to back. We've seen it road, with our nets the last couple of years, bro. Yeah, the, you don't come correct. Road game, you know, the road trips, all this other stuff. So, this Memphis team, to their credit, have been, I think this is the second year in a row, they're the two seed in the West. They've been feeling themselves because during the regular season, they do seem like a team that's unbeatable. But it's like, bro, the regular season don't matter, guys. When the playoffs start, and I've and again, I was in Cleveland when when the, when the Cavs are play. I've seen how playoff when when you're in the playoffs, you get a binder this big, like literally this big, with everything that you need to know about another team. The players, the tendencies, the plays they run, all this other stuff. And that's just the binder. Forget the film sessions, forget everything else. When you're in the playoffs, it's a different animal. And what scares me about the Memphis Grizzlies is they, I think they're so young and ignorant. And sometimes that ignorance is good, right? Because you believe that you can beat anybody. And sometimes it's the a good Bulls. Thing. The Bulls a, a decade ago was that team. The, yeah, the, like, like, the, the, that's a good, <laughs> right. That's a good thing, too. But it also makes you ignorant to the fact of like, bro, this is a different game. Just because you're winning in the in the regular season does not mean that's going to contribute to the playoffs. There's a reason why nobody's really picking the Nuggets to get out the West. As good as they are, nobody looks at the Nuggets and says, ah, they're unstoppable. Like, they're not. And, and which they're, is an insight into both of our psyches that we haven't even brought up Jokic. No disrespect, because again, we like the Euros. Look, like, we're, we're cool with that. But – I feel like the spoiler, if you think one of us is going to say Jokic is the MVP, you're just going to be a little bit oh, Don't get me started on that. But we, we can get into that in a second. But, yeah, that, that that's just what scares me about Memphis is they're still so young and, like, you know, ignorant. And I and I just use that word, like, not as a, not as a you know, say as a bad thing, but it's just real. Like it's just it's just youthful ignorance <laughs> of, like, yeah, we got this. You know, what, what they keep saying, oh, we want all the smoke. We want all the smoke. It's like, hmm. You don't because in the playoffs, you have not proven that yet. And so you're about to get LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and a motivated Lakers team. Again, to your very point. motivated Lakers team that's younger than people think because they got uh D Lo, they got, they got Bamba, they got kids that want not even kids, they got players who have been in the league that feel disrespected like they ain't pros. And this, and that's another thing, they're at that perfect age now before they're a little too old. But they got younger veterans who've been around the block a couple times now. Now, granted, the younger veterans they have, it's not like they have all this postseason success. But that's where LeBron comes in. That's where AD comes in. And so now that's a team you, as a young Even, team, even D'Angelo, bro. Like, I think D'Angelo on the court 
like how he actually plays more or less is the same player in a good way. He peaked with the Nets. He's that good. He's all, he's right there on the border of all-star, but if he's your best player, you're not going to, you're not contending. Right. And Spencer Dinwiddie just said a couple of days ago, what's the difference between 2019 Nets and this year's Nets? I mean, like, yeah, we're, we're hungry. We're a team. We, we still got that type of vibe, but like, we've been to the playoffs. We know this isn't it. This isn't, this isn't the goal. Like, right. so, so I'm sorry. He, he straight up was talking like, I'm sorry. Y'all thought, Oh yeah, we're making the playoffs. I give up on this game. Yeah. Because I know what's coming. Like, he's like, it's not about, Oh yeah, we made the playoffs. We did it. That's not how we feel now. And that's the Nets talking. Right. That's the Nets. That's not the Lakers who are, are, are just like the Celtics have much higher expectations every single year. And exactly. LeBron is t- title or bust still. There's still people out here that disrespect LeBron's greatness. That just that, that's the only thing they ever say about LeBron is something negative. And you got you got people that are ready to anoint another team. Like if we go back, and one day we will, me and Brett literally will. All the teams, all the teams that were just like this Grizzlies teams that stood in LeBron's way, the the Raptors, the Pacers, like that's just off. The, those are two off the top of my head. Oh hell, even the Nets, the Nets, the, the another team was like, oh it's us. The Celtics are, are the most famous one from the East. The Sixers, the Sixers when they had Iggy and them were playoff teams, he would roll through. The Hawks were one of the sixty win Hawks were another the team. The Bulls. The, the Bulls. Bulls. D Rose. D Rose. D Rose won an MVP. I love D Rose. He's one of my favorite players of all time. And he won an MVP in, Le- in, a, in an era LeBron should have won, foreshadowing our conversation about the MVP. It, it, just because people were sick of LeBron and they had LeBron itis. LeBron wasn't the first undisputed MVP because they were sick of LeBron. And he put a New York writer vote for Carmelo Anthony. Like, fast forward to now, and you got the Grizzlies thinking that being the two seed is everything. Mind you, at least I'm being consistent, guys. I said this to to, to Brett earlier when we were talking about it, like, yo, okay, we were the two seed. If Like, one of of my biggest things, matchups obviously make me the most in the playoffs, no doubt. Home home court does matter, especially in a seven-game series. I'm not – so I'm not trying to take away from those points. I'm just saying – if you're if your goal is to win a title, you feel like the Warriors, you feel like the Lakers. I don't give a fuck on the seventh seed. And I'm glad you just said it because that's my point with the Lakers, right? If they beat the Grizzlies, and let's just say that the Warriors road woes still hurt them and they can't get past Sacramento. Now Which again, man. all-time story, good for Sacramento. Shout out to Sacramento, yo. Shout me out, me and Brett Loki. By the way, shout out Mike Brown. He should be coach of the year. Um, you know, that's great. Aaron thing. Fox and them boys. So, like, I mean, that if, if, because again, Wiggins might be back, but again, we don't know what state he's going to be, be in. If, I feel if, like anytime uh, Steph Curry steps on the court, though, you feel like you could win the title. Like, real talk, he's one of those players, like, part of you is like, I mean, I've seen, I've seen him be going crazier hot shooting streaks than, than what it would take yeah, to beat see, the, the I thing. Think, I think the Warriors this year, especially, they're so much better at home. I can't see them getting out of the West when they're going to have to win, you know, multiple series without. Now, again, they might not have to, right? If the Lakers win and they win, they'll have home court against the Lakers. Now, now to your point, now I'm definitely picking the Warriors if they have home court against the Lakers, but they got to get past Sacramento first. You know what I mean? They got a hungry Sacramento. Sacramento team. A disrespected Sacramento team because it was it was 2023 calendar date when I realized that they, they were like the number one offense because because it's one of those things where it's like oh yeah okay then I'm on offense it's early in the season cool guys they're going on a little run now and then it was like wait wait and in my head I was like past the trade deadline holy shit <laughs> like like why are we not talking about the king they don't play any defense either so we'll see you know how I feel about that oh yeah but, yeah but but you know. <laughs> like matchups again, which, which is <laughs> ironic. Which, by the way, shout out to Mike Brown because again, we talk about Jason Kidd. That's Mike Brown's maturity as a coach, where like that was his thing. He's like, yo, if you don't play defense, you don't play. And I think he finally got to a point like, yo, man, I know that's how I want to coach, but that's not the NBA anymore. This is a team. If we're gonna win, we're gonna get up and down. We're gonna score points. Like defense, we'll figure that out another day. So shout out to him because had he been the Mike Brown of yesteryear they would have probably sucked because he probably would have demanded they play great defense when this is not a great defensive team and they probably wouldn't have won anything. So shout out to him 
in terms of maturing as in terms of like, yo, what's the best case for us to win? Is it my system or is it me, you know, formatting to the team that I have instead of having them trying to formulate to me? So that that's that's a big deal. Like that's part of coaching. You can't just say, well, this is my system. You guys got to fit into my system, even if though this roster clearly doesn't fit what we're trying to do here. So, you know, good for him like that. I, I don't think people know. Like, again, I was in Cleveland when he coached Cleveland. That is a big deal. That is a bit because like I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and act like I watched any Kings. Matter of fact, the only Kings games I saw were when they played the Mavericks. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that. So when I just assumed that, oh, he must have turned that defense around. So when, when I heard that they had the number one offense, but they were on the worst defense um, defensive teams in the league, I said, Mike Brown? Really? Oh, I still remember some of the controversies he had it back in Cleveland. So shout out to him, man. Like that to me, that's coaching. That's coaching. Like that's a and that much respect to him because he's also a guy that's been around the block a couple times and has had some kind of interesting, you know, things in his career that haven't gone his way. So shout out to him too. So, but you you've hinted at the MVP discussion. Let's go ahead and get into this. Oh, you don't want to talk? You had one more thing. I thought we were gonna do one more thing before the MVP discussion, which we can real quick because I don't know if we're gonna go that deep on it. How Did far I, do the Suns go? Oh, okay. We can talk about that. Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. because I don't. I don't have too much to say about this, and I don't because it's they're they're I think they're, it's, they're 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 title or bust. They can they can get to the. I'm final. gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just keep it real with you. If they're healthy, they gotta get out the West. If they're healthy, yeah. they're, that's they're what I'm saying. Guys. Like they're, they're they're good enough to make the finals, but like once they hit the finals, is where I'm like, I, I feel think, I feel like to, to be honest with you, whoever comes out the East, if they're healthy, they're gonna win a championship this year. Like, assuming it's the top three teams, right? Unless it's some crazy stuff where again a bunch of injuries happen in the East. And I mean, bro, I'm with you. I, I don't I don't think the Sun I don't think the Suns got it this year. But I'm not counting out a, a Kevin Durant team like we have in his whole career, um, because he's Kevin Durant and and you he, he, besides one series against the Celtics, he's been amazing in the postseason. So and even then, I blame fucking Steve Nash because. I don't know. I don't know. KD was pretty terrible running the offense. You, you, you could, but, but that's my. But that's. But that's what I'm saying. Anyway, about, about the MVP <laughs> this year. <laughs> don't give no me no deals. No deals. <laughs> <laughs> I still have PTSD. Like, oh. I know, right? Like, oh, like, run away! Run away! He stepped on his fucking ankle. He rolled his fucking ankle. We were up by fifty. Anyway. So, uh, uh. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just think there's no team in the West that I think can beat this team healthy. And everybody's talking about the depth, the depth, the depth, bro. It's the playoffs. You you shorten your rotation anyway in the playoffs. So I'm not worried about that. Um, I mean, it's it's crazy seeing if they would have gave more usage to Mikhail, what he could have been and how different I think that the Suns would have moved going forward if they knew, hey, if we up this guy's usage, his efficiency isn't going to go down. Like, that's insane. That's just something – you know, how are you supposed to expect that of anybody that you're like, yeah, if, if, if you extrapolate this double, it's still double. And it's like, OK, dude, that's unrealistic. That's not fair to the player if we expect that of him. So so, you know, hindsight's well, 20, 20. But honestly, I think the death issue was, I think, an issue before that, because let's like we're acting like they gave up like a million players for Kevin Durant. They gave up two guys that were actually playing. Jay Crowder wasn't playing anyway. Mm-hmm. And the two guys they got, the two guys combined aren't as good as Kevin Durant. So it doesn't matter. So at the end yeah, of but, the but day. But Kevin Durant isn't making up all the minutes in the rotations two guys made up at the same position. Yeah, true, I guess. I I, I guess my thing is. The That's the problem. Of- you you gave up. You, yeah, you got a, a one better in this position. You, you really, uh, you know, upgraded this one position, but you lost literally all the depth you had at position that made you dangerous in a league that you need good wing play. Well, that that's literally. true because they gave up three of the same player. You're right. You're, yeah, it's not they like gave they, up. They gave up all like their small up, forwards. Right, right, right. You're right. It's not like they gave up a two guard, a center, and this and that. They gave up like, all their wings. You're right. Um, I just think the depth's not going to be an issue unless there's an injury. But that's why I said if they're healthy, they should get out the West. I really, I really. Then what are they four or five? So they wouldn't even face the Lakers or anybody until the conference finals, in which case they would have home court advantage anyway. In which case, I'm probably still going to take say advantage Phoenix. I mean, like the four or five, I, I think they could beat the Nuggets in, in the second round. I don't think and anybody then, expects the Nuggets to do anything, which 
transition. Jokic is not the MVP, to mo- at least to me and Brett, obviously. He hasn't told me. We haven't talked about this just so we can talk about it here. Um, I'll go first because Brett will probably give you more decisive reasoning, uh, or precise reasoning, duh, decisive. What the fuck is that? Um, I don't think Jokic is just because if we look at it, he went a triple MVP, and I'm thinking, like, we know now, kind of like the reason I didn't like Nash's MVPs. I knew he wasn't a threat then to win the title. And if you're the most valuable player, yeah, it's a regular season award, but that regular season, if you're the most valuable player, you should make a difference when the, the minutes are the most valuable. Like, and he, and Jokic just hasn't You like run a pick and roll and, and make him play some defense. And, and, and it doesn't fucking matter. Like that's how we, I'm not the most athletic dude, but I can defend a fucking pick and roll on a court. So I always played basketball. My fat ass will be on the court because I'm valuable in the, in, in the defensive roles right there. And just the fact that this guy is the MVP because he can score and pass cool, but he's not even the best player. It like, that is he's the most doing, valuable to his contending team. The he's Nuggets are doing that. Yeah, he's not even doing that at the level that these other guys are doing. Passing, yeah. them, but not scoring. And and you look. So you go to. So let's talk about the ones that we we think actually should be in the, more in the running now. Because we're not going in the past and taking away dudes MVPs. Props to you, Jokic. You know what I mean? Like real talk. Like like good for you. But I feel stuck away. LeBron lost a couple MVPs just because people were sick of him. And if I'm being honest with myself. If, if you if before I just kind of looked at all the stats, I was going to say Joel because local bias essentially, I, you know, where I am in Jersey, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, Joel is obviously, but then you know he, he's playing on a team with a dude leading assists, uh, and he hasn't necessarily made Harden better. Harden might have made him better, arguably, yada yada yada. Giannis, if you take him off that team, no one's scared of the Bucks. Giannis has improved all the pieces that that has been put around Giannis. That's fair. Giannis, and, they have, and they didn't have Middleton for most of the year. That's fair. But Middleton wasn't Middleton before Giannis. You know what I mean? Like he was good, but like Giannis, when you play around Giannis in the in, in the span, in the span that I've seen, he, he you play better. Drew Holiday got a ring because because you know he's playing with Giannis. I mean, but Drew Holiday was always that dude. Though. I think he was see. always good, but he's gotten better. Like, I think I think Drew Holiday got better because now he's your fourth option. Bro. That's what I'm saying, though, bro. And, and yeah, we, you know, I don't I don't know if he's, I don't know if that's better. I just mean I just think it's like, well, if Drew Holiday's your fourth option, not your first or second. But isn't Giannis averaging 30 points per game over with some ridiculous field goal percentage that well, we? No, have I I, I agree with you on that. I'm just saying I don't want to give him credit for making Drew Holiday better. I think Drew Holiday was always a great player. Fair. But he wasn't. But he wasn't going to be. I feel like he team. makes the team. I feel like Giannis. Oh, no, no. I, I would. I agree with you. My thing is, it's between Giannis and Embiid and Jokic. Get the fuck out of here. I don't care. I think it's Giannis. I would go Giannis because I'm trying to take my bias out of it, right? And I wasn't considering Giannis out of spite. So, so but when I looked at it, I, I was like, man, this dude is just dominant. Like that's if that's his biggest he's critique amazing. is that he's. He, like he's, Shaq he's, is one of my favorite players of all time. Shaq deserved more recognition for the shit he was doing. Giannis deserves more. Re- if, we're, if we're looking at Jokic, what the fuck isn't Giannis doing? Right. Like MB I, needs to play great for the for the Sixers to win a ring. Period. Like Giannis needs to be Giannis all the time for the Bucks just to be relevant. That's how I feel. Well, so, but same thing. But to me, same thing with MB. Here's my thing. Yeah, but I feel like the Sixers still, could still make the playoffs with Harden. I don't know if the Bucks are really making the playoffs. The Bucks will make the playoffs. They just won't be. They just won't be great. I, I, I think if you took either one of these guys off their teams, like they're not. Which is why we're talking about them the way they're talking. Just to be clear, like I thought it was Joel before. I, I just paid a little bit more attention to the Here, goddamn here's, Bucks. Here's my thing: if Giannis wins it, I wouldn't be mad. Right? They're the number one seed. They had the number one record. Chris Middleton was out most of the year. He's played phenomenal. If Giannis wins it, I can't be mad. If Jokic wins this damn title, I'm gonna lose my I'm gonna lose my mind because this will be the second year in a row he had no business winning. It. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care damn what his plus minus is or what the Pythagorean theorem says or this algorithm or this metric or it, I don't give a crap about any of that stuff. He won it last year when they were the sixth seed. How the hell are you the MVP? When your team's in the sixth seed in the Western Conference, by the way, the weaker conference. It's not like back in the day 
when the West was so good that the six seed would have probably been the two seed in the East. No, no, no. The Western Conference was not even that good last year. And to me, it was sus then. What I don't, and it's even more sus now. What I don't like is people are saying, well, that's not fair. Don't take it away from Jokic just because you don't want him to be a tr- three-time back-to-back-to-back MVP. And I'm like, mm, to be fair, though, you have to consider that. This is history we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And, and I get the whole premise of you got to look at it in a vacuum. You can't look at it overall. I said, but no, that's not fair because at the end of the day, that same logic is used – in his favor because what people are saying is well he won back-to-back mvps and his numbers are better now than they were when he was mvp so how is he not mvp because he shouldn't have been mvp last time but now thank you and that's my point you're using that same logic to boost his stock this year but you're telling us we're not allowed to use that same logic as to why he shouldn't win mvp because at the end of the day and B should have won it last year. There's I don't see no- how he, how Jokic wins it just because from all the writers we listen to on the various podcasts, me and you will tune into to hear people talk, uh, the NBA writers that get a vote. Who are these people this season? I mean, it's the it's the metrics people. I'm telling you, the event his advanced metric stats are stuff we've never seen before. It's unbelievable, and I don't care. I don't care. I'm sorry. Bro, I like analytics when I'm arguing a a role player slash potential of like Cam Thomas. I will use the the analytics in an argument because 40 points in a game does not tell you the whole story of those of this player. Right. When it comes to using analytics for the season, but then you're looking at it like what you said, you're not the most valuable player when you can't even be counted on in the most valuable minutes. But but and but you know I'm not even gonna go there because some people say well it's a regular season what's a regular season world. that's fine I'm not even going with the playoff stuff I'm not that's what I'm saying no I mean not even crunch time I'm, I'm, I'm just saying in the regular season it's a regular season award your team was sixth stop it you're not MVP but he has it we can't take that back now but now I have to consider that I said wait a minute so you're gonna give this guy three for what? And you're using his last MVP season as a crux to give him MVP this year. Because you're saying, well, if he won MVP last year and his stats are even better this year than they were last year, how could he not be MVP and they were number one seed in the West? I said, well, hold on. Seeding didn't matter last year when you gave it to him because he was six. So that's my point. Those same people that are saying you can't use history against him now. I said, yeah, the hell I can because you're using using it for him. Right, you're using it for – is that that's exactly what I was about to say. You're using history for him now. And so for me, I take voting seriously because I guess for me personally, like, again, like I, for those of you who know, like, I know Kai, right? I saw yeah. how hard it was for him to get to the league, right? So I have an appreciation for how much work these guys have to put in to be this great, to be that great how much work they have to put in. And for me who couldn't even make my middle school team, let alone my high school team, I take my, well, I don't have a vote, but as a journalist, I take our job seriously because unfortunately guys who cannot play write the history for guys who can. That's just how it works. And for, for me, I don't like the fact that we have guys that are so biased. And so like, look, I hate James Harden. If James Harden was having a Houston like year, I would say James Harden's the MVP. I got to take my bias out of it. I got to take my bias out of it. And for me, this is legacy, bro. Embiid has been the MVP for the last really three years. He didn't win it two years ago because he got hurt. So he should be the guy right now on the precipice of winning three time MVPs. And we're not, and he's not guaranteed to be good enough to win it again next year. We never know. He could be injured, uh, anything could happen. Yes, I do believe it's his turn to win it. I, I do believe that's the thing. Giannis already has two. Jokic already has two. There's, I, there's no – if we're splitting heads, if we're all saying – I can't believe wins, in the NBA history Jokic has two MVPs before NBA. Th- thank you. And my thing is, if we're splitting hairs here, if we're splitting hairs – because, again, I'm not saying Jokic is a bum. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve to be in the MVP conversation. But what I'm saying, if it's, this, if it's that close and we're splitting hairs, give it to the guy that hasn't won it yet. And who's been the runner-up the last two years? Like you're not hurting Giannis's legacy; he's already a back-to-back MVP. You're not hurting Jokic's legacy; he's already won back-to-back MVP. Let Embiid get one, because you never know if if we go back and say, "Wow, Embiid, as great as he was, 
he never won MVP. Oh, yeah, no shit, because you were using advanced metrics to give it to Jokic. That makes no sense. Like, when we're all dead and gone, and the aliens come back, and they find a hard drive, and they download all the information of what happened, they're going to say, oh, no, Kelo Jokic, three-time MVP, back to back to back. And they're going to say, yo, this guy must have been the greatest player of all time. No, the fuck he wasn't. That guy must have been the greatest center in the league. Right. It's like, no, he was not. <laughs> he wasn't. And 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 that's and that's my thing. Like, this stuff matters to these guys' legacy. This is important. Again, y'all know I hate James Harden. He ran on my team when we needed him most. I hope he never succeeded in basketball again. Not in life. Not in life, because it's never that serious. Right? I don't want him to die. He already you know. succeeded in life. I don't give a shit about that. I'm, I'm saying it's like... No, but I'm saying like, it's not like I want the guy to die, you know, broke, physically broken and heartbroken. I don't want that to happen. Jesus. But but like but I but I but I'll be lying to you if I said I'll be rooting for him to ever win a championship unless it was like some redeemed team where him Kai and Katie come back to the Nets like yo let's finish what we started but that's never gonna happen so whatever so again fuck James Harden I don't want him to win shit but I will continue to say on wax he should have three MVPs he got cheated out of two that's important like think about what his legacy means if he has those two other MVPs Joel Embiid deserves to have an MVP. He was the MVP last year and you cheated him. He probably would have won it two years ago if he didn't got hurt, which I'm fine with Jokic winning that one because he won it because everybody else got hurt. Giannis got hurt. KD got hurt. MB got hurt. Jokic was kind of like the guy that left and he just won that first MVP. And I thought it was going to end there like, oh, wow, that's a random MVP for Jokic. Good for him. Then when he won it last year, I said, oh, no, we're not doing this. We're not going to make this a thing where he's like the best player in the league. We're not doing this. Because that's what we're trying to do now. And it's like, no, we're not doing that. He's the advanced metrics baby. They love him. All the all the all the people with their pie charts and their forums and their metrics and your analytics and all this crap that they pie have. Charts. That's who they want. And it's like, I'm not doing that. If you want to give it to Giannis, because I can't, I have no argument against Giannis. I really don't. He did the most because the way I've always looked at MVP is did you do the most with the least? which is why people said Jokic last year also, to be fair, because everybody was hurt and he still had them in the playoffs. I said, yeah, cool. But you still got to be a top four seed at least. How are you going to win MVP and your team don't even have a home a home series? That don't make no sense to me. So Giannis, if you want to give it to Giannis because his numbers are about the same as, as Embiid, he's better in some stats, Embiid's better in some stats, but the Bucks had the number one seed and they didn't have Middleton for most of the year. I can't, you know what I mean? Like, I can't. I can't argue that. And you know, I again, y'all know I hate Giannis. You know, I if I if you think I hate James Harden, I really hate Giannis. So I, I can't even get mad if Giannis wins it. But to me, if we're splitting hairs, give it to MB, man. He deserves it. Like this is his legacy that we're talking about. And it and it's not a participation trophy. He's earned it. Those are MVP numbers. He's played an MVP season. And had he won it last year, maybe I would have said, hey, look, he won his, his MVP, you know, but he didn't, but he didn't. So because you cheated him last year, you got to give it to him this year. I'm sorry. And, and it's, again, and it's not even no shade to Giannis. Giannis has his two MVPs. If he doesn't win another one, he's still going to be known as a back-to-back MVP. His legacy is already set. He's got his championship already, and he has back-to-back MVP. The, and B, I don't think anybody thinks the Sixers are good enough to win a championship. This might be the one defining moment for his career. Like, and to me, that's important. We got to consider that. We really do. The Sixers' best chance at a title is this year. And I don't even think they're going to win it. I don't think anybody re- realistically expects them to win it this year. I mean, like, I don't feel that confident. Like, and B needs to play great. I wasn't just saying that. Like he needs to play great. But even but even then, he needs hard and stuff. I mean, they're not a better team than the Sixers or than the Celtics. They're not a better team than Milwaukee. They're just not. Yeah, it's either Celtics or Milwaukee coming out coming out of the East, and it depends on the matchup, right? Because if the Celtics come out the East, I really want the Lakers to go come out the West and just have that LeBron oh, yeah, that'd Celtics be, Finals. That would be awesome. So, like, be- I want to say that, but if I had to be realistic, I'm saying Bucks Suns. Like, I, I'm, everybody's healthy. Bucks Suns. Yeah, probably. Probably. I mean, it, it's to me, that's what it comes down to. Yeah, for my finals prediction. If it's Bucks Suns, Bucks winning six. My final I you know, Curzon, I haven't even thought about this. I'm gonna say Celtic Suns. Ooh. 
I'm going to say Celtics Suns, and that's and I'm going to hate that because we're going to hear it from all the freaking Celtics fans. Um, And then I would say um, Celtics Suns is interesting. I might go Celtics in seven if it's Celtics Suns. If it's Milwaukee Suns, I'm probably with you. I'm probably going to say, no, nah, you know what? If it's Milwaukee Suns, I got Suns in six. Ooh. I think oh, Kevin Durant, only because I think Kevin Durant will be so motivated to be Giannis. No, I hear that. I just don't think like, we might see a Kevin stop. Durant. I think the Suns can stop Giannis. True, but I I think we might see a Kevin Durant like we've never seen before. Like and, I think that that Bucks series was such a defining moment in in both of their histories. You know what I mean? Like, tell me about it. So I I don't I, if it's Suns. Bucks, which would be cool, could be a, a finals rematch. I do think that might be, and think about what that would do for KD's legacy as well. Not only, not only is he avenging his Nets uh, days, and avenging me in the fucking finals with the Suns. Like, no, no, his, no, his Nets days. He's avenging. He's avenging the Suns, right? So it'd be kind of like the opposite of the Warriors, where it's like, no, no, they did need him to get over the hump. You know what I mean? Like that now, would, now I'm really cheering against the Suns. You just convinced me that I don't want the Suns to win. Thanks. So I think it's going to be – I don't know why I'm picking the Celtics over the Bucks. Maybe it's because I just really don't want to see Giannis in the finals again. I, I Maybe. But it's not like I want to see the Celtics win either. So it's going to be one of those two teams. I just think the Celtics are one of those teams. They keep knocking at the door. Eventually they got to break through at some point. You would think. Fuck you would think. Fuck this up. I mean, fuck both of them. Like, I really wish the Nets. No, I, I, I would rather see the Bucks win again than, than the Celtics. Like, hundred percent. No, because then it would validate Giannis even more. Yeah, I, I, Giannis is validated. You're, you're, you're like he's already validated. And I hate that. I hate that. He's so. validated, bro. He was validated when he won the title. That that was a valid title. He won oh, it. Like, no. Yes, <laughs> there's no way around this. Just, just no. I'm just gonna yes, say yes. Yes. Just, just no. Like Greek you're right. Freak. No, you're right. Greek no. Freak is arguably the greatest European NBA player ever. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't even think that's a. Yeah, who else would even be Dirk? Dirk Petrovic, Jokic, I guess, would be like the media. And Tony Parker. And Tony Parker. Let's, let's be honest. Petrovic is on because we're Nets fans. Like, and Tony Parker. No, Petrovic is because of the influence. I guess. Um, oh, yeah. He didn't, Justin, he didn't influence Steph Curry. It's not the reason that motherfucker just had a bunch of merch come out because Steph Curry said in a couple interviews, oh, yeah, draws it. And then the Nets were like, oh, shit. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all this merch came out. Sure. Sure. I, I yeah, yeah, I guess if we're talking about impact, I'm just talking about like player, the, the Manu, Tony, Dirk. Manu's from Argentina. He's not oh, European. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Good you're job, right. Charles Barkley. You're right. I'm so you're right. I'm sorry. I was just thinking, I was just thinking, I was just thinking international. Tony Parker's the European. <laughs> no, no, I was just thinking international in general. Um, you're right. European. I think mm, European, I think it's already honest. Okay, so he's validated. Tell where they can find you, bro. Fuck you, Alex. <laughs> I beat the super team. No, you hurt the super teams, you asshole. You didn't beat them. It's, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. I can't, I can't, www. You know what, you know blog. What, you know what? I can't. I can't believe I'm saying this. Go, Cavs, man. Karis, beat them all. Beat them all. Bye. Bye. Beat I'm really signing off to that. No. I, no. Mix. You can find me in there for Look at that Cleveland ass. You've turned Brett into a villain that he's cheering for Cleveland now. See, this is what but see, this is why I don't like Sean Marks because I don't want anybody in the East to win now. Like, like, dude, you dude, you weren't there. You weren't that we were in Philly when they were booing Ben Simmons every time he even looked at the basketball. And to, and, to, and to Ben Simmons credit, he at least looked at the basketball that day. Oh, he looked at the basketball. Oh my god. No, no, no. Seriously. And I'm sitting there and I'm and I'm talking to my to to you know, I can't even say who I'm talking to on this on this pod, but I'm talking to people and I'm like, man, the players were gonna the players are gonna be so fun this year. Between Boston and Philly, the players are gonna be so fun. And then two weeks later, we blow the team up. And I'm like, why? Why? Like yeah, I was because so, Ben Simmons is playing. No, no, I'm saying 
just the at, it was a playoff atmosphere. The, yeah, the yeah the atmosphere is going to be a playoff atmosphere. Why do why? Because we're in the playoffs. So so it's going to be the playoffs. Is it really like it's not going to be fun? Yes, I, I know. I know you've been in denial about about the team because you were like, we got Mikael Bridges back. Well, you know how hard it is to score twenty seven per game. No, not this year. Not this year. Not, this year has been the, that's a whole nother pod for a whole nother day. We're not even going to get into that crap. We didn't even really talk about your nets. Actually, we we're supposed to talk about your nets, but we don't. We don't got to talk about them. They're gonna lose. They're gonna lose in like five. All right, and, I gotta run anyway. And, and you guys are gonna be so happy. You guys, are gonna be, oh, we won a game, yeah, better than last year. Yeah. Okay. Great. Cool. Whatever. An improvement. You would say that's an improvement. So you give the GM props for improving the team. Culture. Culture. <laughs> we got culture now. We lost it. We got culture and more playoff success. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anyway, you can find me at Never for Bret Me. That's N E V A underscore the number four B R E T T. Wait, did I say three T's? B R E T T underscore M E on Instagram and Twitter. Not the Chuck D on all the socials. The underscore dope blog on Instagram. The dope blog, all one word on Twitter. www.thedope.blog. And because you're watching this on, it's on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe and join us next time as we continue to discuss other people's excellence. Go Nets. I want the Nets to, to win in seven. Yeah, go next, but fuck Sean Mark.